Hi, it's Mike from The Beaten Trail. Wanted to take this time to thank everybody for sending in questions. We do get quite a lot on a few topics, so I wanted to cover a few of these. The main question that we get so much is, uh, Dear Mike, we love your videos. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Um, we signed up for Famous Reading Outdoors in Pottsville, but we don't know where to start. Um, if you already have your yearly pass um, and you have your paperwork, you can go anywhere you want. But yes, it really depends on what your riding style is and what you're riding. I'll give you two examples. If you have all your paperwork, you can go to either Darkwater or Burma. And I would say start there because for Darkwater, the field office is there. If you have any questions, there's porta potties at every location. But you can typically on a Saturday have a food truck there. Row hose is great. But Darkwater can get a little busy. Now, I would say start out in Darkwater. You can stay on the main hall road. You can find some hills and you can find some mud and you can find a little bit of everything. But if you have younger family members or friends, you can go to Burma. And Burma is only five minutes away from Darkwater. It is adjacent to dark water, but there's no legal way to get there on your your ATV, your bike, or your side-by-side -side because Route 61 and Walmart basically are in the middle. <laughs> so you pretty much have to trailer there and unload. But Burma is great because the parking lot is spacious, but it also is adjacent to a huge open field, which there are some hills on the ends. But you and your kids or friends or someone just starting out can get a good idea on flat terrain, not have to worry about a huge crowd. And if, if that's you know too light and too basic for you, you can go across the street at Burma to the other side of Burma. And that's where the hills are. There's some mud pits, a little bit of everything for everybody. And so that would be my first recommendation. Go to Darkwater or go to Burma. We have some great videos that you can check out. Here's some links to them. So another question we get is, we, we love our Razor Trail, why did you sell the Razor? Well, first of all, first of all, I, I did have some issues with Polaris warranty. The front seals failed on the differential after about, I don't know, 1,200 miles. I had the extended warranty and the dealer was not a good dealer. Polaris felt it was not a manufacturing defect. I didn't agree with them. You know, so they wouldn't pay. And we're, you're talking about two, three thousand dollars to get a new differential installed. I went to my insurance company, and thankfully Geico came, stepped up to the bat, and they offered to pay the the money to get it fixed. Just after that, I had a just had a bad taste in my mouth with Polaris. I think I got over it. I think no matter what model you buy, and what no matter what brand you buy, you're going to have some issues. These are machines that we beat the hell with on the trail, on rocks, on dirt, in mud and everything. So you're bound to have some failure, but you would hope that a extended warranty would help you in this case. So I moved on to a Honda. Uh, I have had uh, Hondas before, anything from a uh, little CT70 to uh, Honda Rancher and some other old, older pioneers. So I felt Honda was a little bit more reliable. Really it was between a Honda, a Yamaha, and a Kawasaki. I sat in the Kawasaki, it's a tank. The thing is the, the same engine as this, but it's 300 pounds heavier. The uh, Yamaha, I love it really fast. I love the paddle shifters. We have paddle shifters here too. I just, I wasn't really comfortable in the uh, in the YXZ and in the Yamaha. I felt comfortable in the Talon and I like it. And like I said, we have it all decked out and ready to go. And we've been enjoying it a lot. So I, I do miss my trail. We just sold it a little while ago. Uh, it went to a good home. I will miss the go-kart riding. Zipping in through the woods and even with the bigger tires, I was still only about 53, 54 inches. But it was great. It was great. And now, unfortunately, I can't go to some DCNR Pennsylvania riding areas because I'm too big. But my ride, my ride is too big. But that's that's pretty much it. So another question that I do get is, I want to buy a side-by-side, -side, but how do I know what to buy? Well, you know, that's a good question. I My first video was about a Razor Trail 50 inch. It's a class one ATV, it was 1200 pounds or less. It's a smaller version of this, of this Honda. It really, I think the best thing to do is to know what kind of riding you're gonna do, to also be comfortable in the very unit that you're gonna buy. 
You don't want to you don't want to sit in a vehicle and the steering wheel is too tight, the seat doesn't move back. You want to be comfortable in that very model. So if you can't sit in it at a minimum, and I know everybody wants to ride it, most places don't let you do test drives, at least in the New Jersey area you should insist that you need to at least drive down the street. You need to be comfortable, your elbows, you want to be, so I can put a bag here, you want to be able to know what kind of ride you want. And it doesn't matter if you want a Can-Am, or you want a Honda, or you want a Polaris, or you want a Kawasaki, a Yamaha, be sure that, one, they have it in stock, <laughs> but no, all seriousness, be sure that you know that you're gonna be comfortable in the ride. You want to test, take it for a test drive, just be aware that when you buy a side-by-side, -side, that's that's the cheapest part of owning a side-by-side. -side. And I joke, but I don't. So let's say you buy a Razor Trail and you pay $16,000 for one of the new trails. That is not going to include a windshield. It's not going to include door bags. It's not going to include a front and rear bumper. In most cases, you can get some packages. It's not going to cover any rear view camera, side mirrors. There's a lot of things that don't come with a side by side. So if you're going to buy new, make sure you know those costs up in your head. You want to be able to be comfortable in the ride, you know, be comfortable with the price as well. Because if you really want a speed racing unit, you could spend more than thirty-five, forty, fifty thousand dollars on one of these. But when we started out, we started out on a trail. And the stock tires are thin. You're going to want new tires. You're going to want a skid plate on the bottom. That's really important. And this all adds up. I mean, tires alone could be five hundred to a thousand dollars. A skid plate could cost you five hundred to a thousand dollars. You're going to want all these things to make your riding experience better and to also protect your investment. You'll get accessories, you'll get upgrades, and you're going to pay for fuel and membership somewhere. Back to the original question is, you know, what kind should you buy? Do you have a family? Do you want to buy a four-seater? Now, you can buy a four-seater that's really long and has a lot of leg room, but you can also buy something that isn't a sport, it's more utility, something like a, a Yamaha R-Max, although it blurs the lines between sport and utility but you can also get performance can-am units they, they just you want to make sure that you can fit your unit on a trailer so that's another follow-up question when you buy a side-by-side -side, you're not going to get a trailer with it you want to make sure the trailer can be towed safe really super long-winded know your machine and know your dealer where you're going to buy one get a recommendation from a friend look online see don't overextend yourself when it comes to getting the biggest and the flashiest. If it's your first one, start out with something basic. See what your friends like. Come to Darkwater. <laughs> you want to come to Darkwater or find us? We'll let you. We'll let you try out the Honda. I probably shouldn't say that, but if you have any questions, please ask. Those are the, those are the questions I wanted to cover. Please keep sending them. Try to answer all the questions when we do a group ride. I usually get individuals that come up to me and they want to ask. Thank you very much for everybody who is following us on Facebook, on the Beaten Trail Facebook. The reels, we put out reels in the morning and at night and little short videos. Sometimes it's snippets, sometimes it's drone footage, sometimes it's some humor. But please, please keep liking our reels and our videos and we appreciate you subscribing and you know just following us and you can do that on youtube and instagram and facebook and tiktok and yeah we're on twitter too but i really don't tweet that much if at all but thanks for watching and we'll see you out there on the trail